It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Thursday to you, wherever you may be. Dodgers home, breaking the seal on a new homestand. Seven games with the Cardinals, finishing up with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Four with the St. Louis Cardinals. That's worth a little bit of money. For the Dodgers, they've struggled with the Cardinals in the postseason. They were eliminated in 2013 and again in 2014, despite the fact going head-to-head with the Cardinals during the regular series, they won four of seven. They are reminded of all of that tonight when Michael Walker goes to the mound for St. Louis. He is seven and one. The defeat was given to him by the Dodgers, but it was tough. He had a no-hitter going into the sixth inning, and Yasmani Grandal hit a three run home run to beat him and beat him for Carlos Frias who'll be on the mound for the Dodgers. Frias is four and two. He is two and oh against the Central Division beating Milwaukee and his performance against St. Louis probably his best game in his young career. He went seven and allowed just one unearned run. For the Dodgers, a very good home record, one win less than the Cardinals. The biggest difference between the two teams, the Cardinals are above 500, 13 and 11 on the road, and the Dodgers are below 500, 10 and 15 on the road. But those are just numbers. Sit back, pull up a chair, relax, have a wonderful night watching the ball game, and a whole lot more right after this.
Thursday evening to you, wherever you may be. We're at Dodger Stadium awaiting the start of the homestand. Game one of a four-game series against the St. Louis Cardinals. Dodgers making noise, particularly young Jock Peterson, who has homered in five straight games. Of course, his manager, Don Mattingly, homered in eight straight games. So young Jock has a long way to go. And against a very good ball club, led by the skipper Mike Matheny and the St. Louis Cardinals. It is such a great rivalry, young Jock wouldn't realize it. But since 1900, there's a difference of three victories between the two teams. The Dodgers, 1,017, and the Cardinals, 1,014. And perhaps it's almost biblical in looking at Jock Peterson as he runs out onto the field to say a little child shall lead them. Well, not really, but Mike Matheny knows all about good ball players and the effects they have not only on their own team, but on the opposition. So for Mike Matheny and the Visiting Birds, a ball club that is two games above 500 on the road and a ball club that is six games in front of second place Pittsburgh, here's the way they stock up. Colton Wong, the kid from Hilo, will open up at second base. Matt Carpenter at third. Matt Holliday in left. Johnny Peralta at short. Mark Reynolds at first. Jason Hayward in right field. Javier Molina behind the plate. John Jay in center field. And the pitcher, Michael Waka. On the mound for the Dodgers, young Carlos Frias with a record of 4-2. and two. He is 2-0 and oh against the Central Division. He's beaten Milwaukee and the Cardinals. When he faced the Cardinals last time out, probably the best start of his young career. He went seven innings and allowed only an earned earned run. So for Frias, at the top of his game, that's exactly what the Dodgers need right now after a rough road trip. If there is one difference between the two teams, I mean, they're leading in division. The Cardinals, 22-7 and seven at home. And they are 13 and 11 on the road. They've also beaten the Western Division five out of six. The Dodgers have won 21 and seven on the road, and that's been their big problem. They are 10 and 15. And stepping out of the Western Division, when the Dodgers play the Central Division, they have three wins and four losses. So with all of that, they're all numbers. Now let's see how they indicate. And how this one goes. Colton Wong out of Hilo, Hawaii. A number one Cardinal pick out of the University of Hawaii back in 2011. So Colton, left-hand batter waiting. Free us first pitch, fastball for a strike. And the count 0-1. Wong last year hit 163 on pitches that were on the inside part of the plate. He just couldn't get around on it. Strike one pitch, a hard ground ball into right center field for a base hit. Over to scoop it up is Andre Ethier, and so Wong opens up with a base hit. To conclude the thought, Wong on those same pitches where he hit 163 last year is batting 303 this year. So they pitched inside, and he bangs it into right center. A beautiful evening for a ball game, 68 degrees. That June gloom that we had in the morning has burned off. We have a canopy of blue, just a few wisps of clouds up there, and the right field pavilion and down the right field line still bathed in sunlight. So Wong is at first, nobody out, and the batter is Matt Carpenter, and the Dodgers have tremendous respect for him. Carpenter takes low, and we have a one ball, no strike count. Among other things for Matt Carpenter, a guy who really makes the ball club move. He's hitting 314. He has eight home runs, 29 runs batted in. He has scored 13 times in the first inning. And he's a very tough hitter, especially with two strikes. So the left hand hitting Carpenter waiting. Frias turns, throws to Ferris, and he picked off one. So Colvin Wong trying to get a jump is nailed. By the way, he was a break-even base dealer, four and four. We will see if the Cardinals are going to review the play or not. Frias fired over there. Gonzalez looked like he might have gotten him on the elbow as he went back hands first. And they're going to take a look. You could see the uniform, the half sleeve 
You could see touch by the glove before the hand was on the bag. And they will not review it. So Wong gets a base hit and is promptly picked off. And now Carpenter has a look at a pitch low and the count two balls and no strikes. Matt Carpenter, as we mentioned, a good two strike hitter. He's also very good if he goes all the way in a full count. When he strikes out, it's usually a call third strike, and he takes off the play ball three on deck, Matt Holiday. Frias, who's averaging about 95 miles an hour with his fastball, he's done exceptionally well with it. 3 0 pitch is in there, 3 and 1 at 92. So Matt Carpenter waiting. He has piled up 59 hits looking for 60. Free us ready. Now the 3 1 pitch. Carpenter takes low. Ball four. So for free us starts off on a wobbly note. A base hit and a walk. However the pickoff has helped him. Here are the Dodgers with the leather. Gonzalez, Hernandez, Rollins and Turner. Guerrero, Peterson and deep here. Randall behind the plate. Howie Kendrick hurt his knee a little bit in Colorado. Stiffened up. And it was a good time to give him a rest. So Kike Hernandez playing second base. Mad Holiday hitting 313, three home runs, 24 runs batted in. He has 274 career home runs. A very tough hitter. Free us out of his stretch. A look over at first. Now to Holiday who takes high ball one. They're talking about all the long home runs that have been hit. Whenever Holiday comes here. You have to realize that he hit one that we have no idea how far it went. They said 481, but it cleared the back wall of the Dodger bullpen. It went off where the three sisters, the three palm trees are, and disappeared. That was a monstrous blow by Matt Holiday. One ball and no strikes to Matt. Frias ready, back with a slider, a chopper to the right side, and then there's to second for a force throw to first double play. It took Holiday a long time to get down the line. So the Dodgers turn it 4 6 3. There was a hit, nobody left. And at the end of half an inning, well, wait a minute. Uh, again, now they're going to perhaps review. We don't want to walk away if the inning is really not over. That's probably the biggest single problem about this idea of review. It looks like the third out, then they call and check the videographer. And he will tell them whether they think it's worth it. Here's the throw to first. Holiday foot on the bag. Looks like the ball was in the glove. We'll have to wait and see. And it looks like the Cardinals will ask for a review. So the Dodgers slowly going back on the field. I was got a moment to, to reminisce about it. Years ago. We were doing a football show where you would do four games, not simultaneously, but you would bounce from game to game. And there was a system cue. In other words, the announcer had to say, this is CBS where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System. So we're bouncing from game to game, and there was a very colorful announcer in Georgia by the name of Bill Munger. And Bill was describing this dramatic moment the Georgia Tech and the Bulldogs and they're down to the five yard line and this is CBS where hun- hold everything and all across the country engineers are falling on their heads as he suddenly dropped the system cue at least in baseball we can say there's the double play and the inning is no wait a minute and here we are now the bang bang play at first and the umpire is asked to do almost an incredible job in the face of the tremendous equipment that we have today and for me it's always a tribute to the umpires every time we have a review to realize what a virtually impossible job it is to please everybody. So let's see it is safe so the inning is still alive so the Dodgers have to go back on the field holiday hits into a force play four six and with two down. The batter will be Johnny Peralta. So Holiday hustling as best he could. It took him a while, but he still was able to beat the throw. Johnny Peralta 
has 29 RBIs. That's number two if you are a shortstop. And of course, he's picked up a couple more coming off. He's batting 310 with eight home runs. Peralta, big right hand batter, piled up 61 hits already this year. Frias trying to get out of the inning. Carlos delivers, fastball swung on and missed, and the count 0 and 1. Johnny Peralta has grounded into eight double plays. He doesn't have to worry about that. Holiday short lead at first. Matt, not much of a threat to do any running. Frias ready, looks over his shoulder at Holiday, back with a pitch in there, and the count 0 and 2. The holiday at first, no balls and two strikes. They counted Johnny Peralta. Peralta normally is a first ball hitter, but he's up there and behind in the count, 0 and 2. Peralta swings, slaps a fly ball down the right field line. Ethier, a long way to come. The ball is foul and drops untouched. So Peralta, kind of a half swing fly ball that just sliced away foul. The Peralta comes back and Ethier. Goes back to his position. No balls and two strikes to count. Two out. First inning, no score. Colton Wong led off with a base hit and was promptly picked off first base. Matt Carpenter then walked. Holiday hit into what looked like a double play, turned out to be a force play. And Peralta back up with Holiday at first. No score, first inning. And 0 and 2 the count on Johnny Peralta. Frias ready, right handed delivers, fastball grounded to the hole and through despite the dive of Hernandez. So for Frias, he's pitching a very wobbly first inning, and yet he has two out and a chance to escape against Mark Reynolds. First baseman, number 12, Mark Reynolds. So Kike Hernandez overshifted, could not get back. He gave it his best shot. He couldn't touch it. Ethia had to come up and get it. So Mark Reynolds checking in. Mark Reynolds for years and years and years was a do or die hitter. And when he died, so to speak, he struck out. I mean, he was the number one strikeout man. The first pitch to Mark is slapped down the right field line, slicing foul back into the lower deck and the count on one. They tell me that Reynolds has changed, which would really be quite a story. You know, he struck out 204. 223 a major league record 211 he's not familiar with the name DiMaggio however they say now he is not that much of a strikeout hitter more just a contact hitter not trying to get home run the strike one pitch on the way Reynolds lays off a slider away and the count one ball and one strike Reynolds so far this year has had about 140 plate appearances and he has struck out 39 times. In fact, he's not only cut down on his strikeouts right now, he's not even the top strikeout man on his club, and he usually did that. So Mark waiting, one ball, one strike. Frias ready, back with a pitch, swung on and missed. One and two the count. Reynolds facing Carlos Frias. Another thing about what a free swinger he was. He had one stretch back in 2007 where Mark Reynolds struck out nine straight times at tied a major league record. So two on, two out, first inning, no score. Reynolds out of Pikeville, Kentucky, by way of Virginia Beach, Virginia. He grew up playing with Ryan Zimmerman and a couple of others who made it to the big leagues. Reynolds 32 years old Jason Haywood on deck and Reynolds swings and misses and that reminds us of the Reynolds of old he has now struck out 40 times and despite two hits and a walk the Cardinals come up empty and at the end of half an inning Cardinals nothing Michael Walker getting ready to go to work.
not just looking at Michael Wacky. How about you? Do you remember the 2013 World Series when Colton Wong was picked off first base? Well, we can talk about that later on. Right now, we'll check the Dodger lineup. Jock Peterson leading off in center field. He's homered in five straight. Yasmani Grandal, the catcher, hitting second. Adrian Gonzalez at first, and then Justin Turner at third. Andre Ethier in right, Alex Guerrero in left, Jimmy Rollins at short, T.K. Hernandez at second, and Carlos Frias on the mound. On the mound for the Cardinals, he's a long drink of water. Michael Waka, six feet six, 210 pounder, and his first pitch to Peterson is in for a strike, and they count 0 and 1. Jock Peterson having a remarkable start. Of course, the record for most games consecutive. One or more home runs, eight. The next pitch to Jock is low, one ball and one strike. Dale Long did it for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We were there way back in 1956 to saw him do it. One one pitch is taken for a strike, one and two. Don Mattingly did it in 1987, and Ken Griffey Jr. did it in Seattle in 1993. So for Peterson, a long way to go, and the one-two pitch to young Jock is taken outside, two and two the count. Bottom of the first, no score. Interesting, most of Peterson's home runs have gone to right center field. Two-two pitch is swung on a drive into right center field. On his horse, reaching up and making a spectacular catch is Jason Hayward. That would not have been a home run, but it certainly would have been at least a double. So Hayward goes to right center, exactly where Peterson would hit his home run, only it would have to be a lot higher, and Hayward makes a wonderful play. So one away here in the first inning. Yasmani Grandal will be coming up. But Jason Hayward, formerly with the Braves, now a valuable part of the Cardinals, already puts the value on the line. Yasmani Grandal is batting second. And the first pitch to the catcher is high, ball one. 213 games he's played, and this is only the fifth time that he's ever hit in the second spot. He takes one high, then he takes one for a strike, and the count one ball and one strike. Hitting in the number two slot, he's five for ten with a couple of home runs. One one pitch, sprayed foul down the left field line out of play, and they count one and two. Waka was beaten in a sense by Yasmani Grandal in St. Louis. Grandal hit a three run home run against him. The one two pitch on the way overhand fastball on the outside corner. Boy you talk about pitching downhill. Wow. When you're six feet six standing on a 10 inch mound and that right arm comes around like a pitching machine. He really is pitching downhill. So two out, tough at bat for Grandall. And now here's Adrian Gonzalez. Two out, first inning, no score. Adrian batting 333, 11 home runs, 39 runs batted in. First pitch to Adrian, ground ball to third. A wide of the bag was Carpenter to make the play. So a very easy one, two, three inning, thanks to that running catch by Jason Hayward in right center field. Robbing Jock Peterson at the end of an inning. No score.
Disputed double play that turned out to be a force play. We had a great running catch by Jason Hayward on the ball hit by Jock Peterson. So we are off and running as Hayward checks in. He'll be followed by Yadier Molina and then John Jay. Jason Hayward hitting 253. Highly regarded first round pick by the Atlanta Braves back in 2007. He has never really done what they had hoped he would do. He takes a pitch off the plate, ball one. Jason comes into this game with a six game hitting streak. He had a broken jaw. He was hit by pitcher Jonathan Neese. He swings big chopper backing up for the hop as Gonzalez flips it to Frias covering, and down goes Harry. So one away, and Yadier Molina coming up. I apologize, first of all, for my ignorance with the Spanish language. But we were reading a little bit about the Molina family. And they're from Vega Alta in Puerto Rico. But Vega Alta has a nickname. And it's something like Pueblo de los Navagatos. And apparently, when it's translated properly, that means the town of squatters. The pitch to Molina in for a strike. The reason they gave it the nickname the town of squatters is that a lot of the workers would go down to the railroads. They would squat waiting for the train that would take them to the sugarcane fields there where they work. So isn't it interesting? One of the great catchers to ever come along is from a town called the town of squatters. And he has spent his career squatting and doing exceptionally well. Yadier Molina. Molina has won just about all the awards. He had a brother Ben and another Jose. They were all big league catchers. Two and one the count to Molina. Fastball foul back. And the count two and two. Molina has been with the Cardinals since 2004. He's had a half a dozen gold gloves. And he is without a doubt a holy terror here at Dodger Stadium. Since 2004 coming to Dodger Stadium. His career batting average is 327. They have a lot of trouble trying to get him out. Free us ready in the 2 2 pitch on the way. Fastball swung on and missed. That was 96. As we said, Free us is right up there with the hard throwers, averaging around 95 for the fastball. Say, by the way, friends, we're excited to announce that starting Tuesday, June the 9th, Sportsnet LA will be available to charter customers. That's right. For information on channel listings, log on to Sportsnet LA. Dot com. And to Charter and the good folks, welcome to the club. Here's John Jay. One ball and no strikes. Jay, left-hand batter. Free us holding the ball out in front, looking over the fingertips. 1-0 pitch on the way. It's a little ground ball to the right side. PK is up with it and makes the play. So an easy 1-2-3 inning. But Carlos Frias picks up his second strikeout along the way. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score.
floor, and it occurred long before the start of the game. You looked out and you saw a lot of the Cardinals around second base. The rest of the pitchers were running in the outfield, and you thought, what in the world are they doing out there? Well, Jose Akindo, who was a marvelous infielder and the third base coach, was holding court, giving the birds the defensive regimen for the game. The first pitch now to Justin Turner gets a strike 0 and 1. Akindo, who was a marvelous player, a very, very intelligent baseball man. So before the game, instead of having a meeting in the clubhouse where there's a lot of noise and visitors, instead of having a meeting on the sidelines or in the dugout where there are so many people, nope, he takes them all out around second base and he talks defense. The Cardinals, by the way, have made 32 errors this year. So it's just something we thought we'd point out to you because we just don't see it. Meanwhile, a drive into right field that's going to be in front of Hayward for a base hit. So Justin Turner, a single to right field to open up matters here in the second inning. No score. Andre Ethier and Alex Guerrero coming up. So Andre Ethier will be checking in. Michael Waka is not only seven and one. Waka is five and zero oh on the road. His earned run average in six road starts, 1.6. And one other note, he has started 10 games, and the Cardinals have won nine of the 10. So he's their big man right now. Waka at the belt, looks over at first, comes to Ethier, slips it in for a strike, and they count 0 and 1. Andre Ethier hitting 297, very much at home at Dodger Stadium, where he's hitting 338. 15 of his 22 ribbies right here. Strike one pitch on the way. Waka comes over the top. Good fastball swung on and missed. He's no slouch. He hits 95 on the gun. So Turner hits a so called mistake pitch. No balls, two strikes, and singles to right field. We'll see just how important that is. Waka leans in, straightens up. And the big right hand is next pitch high and away. Ball one. Fastball that just got away. Waka 5 and 0 oh on the road. 2 and 1 at home. Right hand batters are hitting 220. Left hand batters 197. Remember, he started the year 7 and 0 oh before the Dodgers beat him in St. Louis. The 1 2 pitch on the way. Swung on. Lifted to left center. Very playable. Coming over is Jay, the center fielder, to make the catch, and then gets it back in with Turner holding at first base. Fly ball to center, the one down. Alex seven. Guerrero Alex coming up. Guerrero. <laughs> Alex Guerrero had that dramatic ninth inning grand slam home run in Colorado, hitting 297, 10 home run. That puts him third among the rookies, 25 runs batted in. So Alex right hand batter Waka straightens up looks into Molina delivers and the first pitch of fastball foul back and the count 0 and 1. Guerrero has a look down to Lorenzo Bundy Waka a first round pick but he's had his problems basically with his right shoulder. It's plagued him so much so that uh, last year. He was in only a few games after being brilliant the year before. Next pitch foul back 0 and 2. To refresh your memory, 2013 in the league championship series against the Dodgers, Waka two wins, no losses, 13 and two thirds scoreless innings, and turned out to be the MVP. Last year he was five and six, and he had a lot of shoulder problems. Strike two pitch on the way fastball up and away ball one. So Alex Guerrero with a one ball two strike count. Jimmy Rollins waiting on deck no score bottom of the second inning. Now the one two pitch coming up Turner cautious lead and the pitch is chased and missed down and away and so. Guerrero strikes out. That would be the second strikeout for Waka. And the batter is Jimmy Rollins. 
Jimmy Rollins has not uh, caused very many headlines, but the last few games he's hit better than 360, and he has his average up now to 211. More than that, he's reached base safely 15 of the last 22 games, and over that stretch, hitting around 280. So Jimmy batting left-handed, switch hitter, as you know, looks at a slow breaking ball. Off-speed pitch for a strike. First time he's done that. 0 and 1 to count. Rollins facing Waka. No score. Turner at first, two down. Throw to first. Turner diving back. Just did get back. No balls and one strike to count. The strike one pitch on the way a little low. Where did Michael Walker come from? Well, everybody knew he was a good pitcher. He was taken in the first round with the compensatory pick surrendered by the Angels when they signed Albert Pujols, the stalwart Cardinal. So for St. Louis, they didn't do badly anyway. The one one pitch is a little high. Two and one to count. To Jimmy Rollins. Turner at first, two out. Second inning, no score on a gorgeous summer's evening. There is no June gloom, not at this hour of day. Two and one to count. We'll see what Turner does. He's not going anywhere. And the pitch is swung on and missed. And the count two and two. The Cardinal pitching staff leads the major leagues. An earned run average. The entire staff 2.6. And the relievers are second. An ERA of 2.1. And we'll see them all. It'll be Carlos Martinez, Jaime Garcia, and Lance Lynn during the series. Rollins raising a fly ball. Holiday coming over with Jay. Holiday for the catch. So that'll do it for the Dodgers. They get a leadoff single from Turner and nothing more. At the end of two, no score. You want him to do something, and as most children would do when they're put on a spotlight, no, I don't want any part of it. Thank you very much, but I'm not interested. No, you're not going to impress me by offering me anything. And the first pitch to Michael Waka in for a strike, 0 and 1 to count. At 6 feet 6, he gives you a very good strike zone. He does have three hits. And he promptly hits a fly ball. Peterson moving over, picks it off. And we have one down here in the third inning. Say, watching Peterson catch that ball, don't forget, Tuesday at 7 10, 
Dodgers and D backs, and you can be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance and receive a Jock Peterson t shirt presented by Edmonds.com. For more information, go to Dodger.com slash promotion. Timing, it's everything. <laughs> one out in the third. Here's Colton one. Singled and was picked off when we were asking you if you remember the 2013 World Series. Pitch in for a strike. As a rookie, Wong was picked off to end a World Series game. Red Sox won game four. Wong was a pinch runner, picked off. The only time a World Series has ended on a pickoff. The next pitch is on the outside corner. Red Sox would win that series in six games. Well, he was picked off again tonight, just to remind those who hadn't seen it. You know the, I think, the most famous tag to end a World Series game? Well, he went in for a bad ball and strikes out. Two down. The Yankees are losing to the Cardinals in the World Series by one run, three to two. The runner at first base for the Yankees is Dave Ruth. A very good hitter at the plate for the Yankees. Two out. It's 3-2 Cardinals. Babe Ruth decided to steal second base. He was nailed. And the Cardinals won the World Series 3-2. I mean, that, that's about as big a tag out in the history of the game. Matt Carpenter takes his strike. So two down in the third. No score. Should be this kind of a series. Tough pitching. Very good defensive plays. Strike one pitch on the way off the outside one and one to count to Matt Carpenter. Carpenter hits the ball in the air a lot. The one one pitch on the way Carpenter swings fouls it away. He would be fourth lowest rate of ground outs to fly balls. Matt, an outstanding player. Boy, what a clutch hitter he has been for the Cardinal. Hmm. One of the fellows who does not wear a batting glove, and there aren't very many of those around anymore, but Carpenter is one of them. You know, a golf pro, you'll see, use a glove, but when he gets to the green, he takes the glove off to putt. There's a hopper wide of third off the glove of Justin Turner. Carpenter holding on at first base. And the golf pros say they want to feel the putter. Well, I think it's the same thing with Matt Carpenter. He doesn't want to wear a glove. That just feels better. He slices one. Turner has it just kick off his glove. We will assume that'll be a boot. Yep. So Carpenter is aboard on the era by Justin Turner. And the batter now, the always dangerous Matt Holiday. Holiday has the face of an athlete or maybe during World War II they would take certain pictures of fighter pilots. But Matt has just one of those great faces and probably bangs it into center for a base hit. So with two out the error followed by a base hit and that'll bring up Johnny Peralta. Johnny Peralta. Thirty six pitches made by Carlos Frias. Remember, Carlos shut the Cardinals down for seven innings on an unearned run. So here is Peralta trying to get the birds on the board. Johnny Peralta from the Dominican Republic originally started his career signed by the Cleveland Indians. John, right hand hitter, takes a look at the first pitch in there for a strike. And the count 0 and 1. Dale Scott is the plate umpire. Dale working on his 30th year as a major league umpire, and he's a dandy. He worked the division series with the Dodgers and Cubs in 2008. Born in Oregon, still lives up there. And when it gets too wet and cold, he moves down to Palm Springs. For about 18 years, he also officiated football and basketball as well. Gail Scott. Veteran umpire and a good one. 
So Peralta will put up some big numbers for the Indians and the Tigers. Same to the Cardinals last year. John, 33 years old, takes one off the plate. So Frias in trouble in the first inning got out of it. Had an easy inning in the second. Now with two out, the era puts Carpenter aboard and then Holiday singles him to second base. One and one to Johnny Peralta. Peralta hitting 313, a shot up the middle for a base hit. Here comes Carpenter, and the throw is going to go back into Rollins, and the run scores. So the door was opened by the error. It's an unearned run, but the Cardinals will take it and take a one to nothing lead. So a two out error, and then Holiday and now Peralta back to back singles with Peralta getting the run batted in. So the Cardinals are not finished with two out. They have Mark Reynolds coming up. Reynolds went to an old habit in the first inning. After Carpenter scores, Reynolds struck out with a couple of runners aboard in the first inning. So two on, two out. And Reynolds checking in. Reynolds does have three home runs, 15 runs batted in, swinging hard enough all the time to be a home run threat. First pitch to Reynolds down and away ball one one and zero. Oh. Reynolds with all of his strikeouts remember hit as many as 44 home runs. Did that for the Diamondbacks in 2009. He also had 37 home runs 32 home runs. So he says sock but uh, he pays quite a price. The 1 0 pitch check swing. They're going to look swing, says Dan Iasonia. And a one ball, one strike count to Mark Reynolds. In one game back in 2009, Reynolds, who's known for power and for striking out, he stole four bases in one game. That was against the Chicago Cubs. Foul back, so he's on the edge now, one and two. Reynolds, who originally signed with the D-backs out of the University of Virginia, came up to Arizona in 07, went from the Diamondbacks to the Orioles to the Indians, the Yankees, the Brewers, and now the Cardinals. So Frias trying to get at him and get out of the inning. One and two to Mark Reynolds. Frias delivers, swung on, little flare into right field. It's going to drop in front of Ethier. They are going to wave in Holiday. The throw to the play he is in there. And the Cardinals have picked up their second run of the inning. Reynolds a little pop fly into right field for a base hit. The oldest line in baseball. It'll look like a line drive in the box score. So with two out, an error at third, followed by three straight singles. And the Birds have scored twice. Ethia making the throw to the plate. Holiday running with two out, and there was no chance for Grandall to put a tag on him, but Matt was really digging coming around third. So two runs and five hits for the Cardinals, leading two nothing. So you had Holiday, Peralta, and Reynolds all getting base hits, and now Jason Hayward runners at first and third, and the fastball in for a strike. By the way, with a runner at third, as we always do, Frias has one wild pitch. So Peralta down the line from third. Reynolds at first, two out. Frias a high set, right handed back with a pitch foul to the screen, a 96 mile an hour fastball. Hmm. 0 and 2 the count. We mentioned earlier the fact that Jason Hayward. That is jaw broken by Jonathan Neese, which is why he wears that looks like a foam rubber attachment on the right side of the helmet. 0 oh and 2 the count. Frias ready, delivers very high. Jonathan Hayward, one of those fellows who was certainly blessed, his very first major league at bat. 
He hit a three run home run. One of the things the Braves didn't like he. He got into the habit of hitting so many ground balls and they kept thinking of home run. He nubs one out in front of the plate. Randolph picks it up throws him out and that's the inning. So Hayward is out two three. However an error followed by three straight singles. Holiday single in one and scored the other. And at the end of two and a half innings. Two to nothing St. Louis. Johnny Peralta knocked in one of the two runs. Peralta now has 11 RBIs in his last 11 games. Kike Hernandez batting eighth, and that's usually bad news for the pitcher Michael Waka. The pitch to Kike in for a strike. Believe it or not, the number eight hitters are hitting 360 against Michael Waka. Strike one pitch, foul back, and the count 0 and 2. So Kike. The man who plays just about everywhere, batting 255, two home runs, five runs batted in. Walker ready and comes right back over the top. Little chopper back towards the mound. Molina picks it up, throws in the dirt, and a nice play at the end by Mark Reynolds. So Molina, a hurried throw. Reynolds makes a good play. Pitcher, number 77. Ball just didn't go anywhere in a big swing. Molina in a hurry threw off balance and a tough one to handle, and Reynolds did just that. The so one away, and the batter will be Carlos Frias, who picked up his first and only Major League base hit with a bunt single. Carlos backs away, the pitch in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. His bunt was against the Cardinals last Saturday. Swings doesn't get it. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Carlos has only that hit. He's 1 for 12. Waka right after him again and strikes him out. So down goes Frias. That would be the third strikeout. And the batter will be Jock Peterson. Where is Peterson in the Dodger history book as far as? Home run streak. Well, you probably know he is homered in five straight. Matt Kemp homered in five straight five years ago. Fourteen years ago, Sean Green homered five. And Roy Campanella, way back in 1950, homered in five straight games. To repeat, Dale Long, Don Mattingly, and Ken Griffey Jr., they homered in eight consecutive games. So here's Jock hitting 265. 
big slow curveball in for a strike and they count 0 and 1. Interesting that most of his home runs have gone either to center or deep right center field. As a left hand batter, Peterson with 17 home runs and only one has gone to right field. That's it. One. That really is a surprise. He hits one in the air to left field. Going back on the ball is Holiday watching it go off the wall. Peterson on his way into second base with a stand up double. He does have one home run to left field. That ball died and hit the wall. So Peterson a wrong field double. And the battle will be Asmani Grandal. So remember. Peterson in the first inning was robbed of a double by Jason Hayward and this time he hits one just below the 375 sign for a double. Where is Jack Peterson in doubles if you care. That would be his ninth. Two down and here's Grandall. He takes one that a slider for a strike. Oh and one the count. Walker ready to strike one pitch fastball a little low. One thing that Walker was doing certainly by the end of 2013 he was using his change up 27 percent of the time. We don't know very many pitchers who throw the change up that much. One one pitch. Two and one to count. Walker, as we mentioned, has had a lot of shoulder problems, but he's 100% now. Fastball, changeup, he has a curve and kind of what they call a cutter slider. 2 1 pitch. Michael looking back at Peterson, a changeup lifted to right center and deep, but not deep enough for the Dodgers. Moving over is John Jay to make the catch. So the Dodgers get a wrong field double by John Peterson and they leave him. And at the end of three, Cardinals two, Dodgers nothing. Day. And by Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today. Only at Jack in the Box. Jack Peterson doubles off the left center field wall, but did not get the home run the crowd was hoping for. One other note, you know, he's homered in five straight. The Dodgers have homered in six straight at home. And now here's Yadier Molina. One ball and no strikes. 
Molina, another first ball hitter. Uh, that pitch is right around the plate. He'll go after it like that. Ground ball to Hernandez. One away. It's amazing. Everybody who follows the game within the game knows that Molina will swing at the first pitch. At least, oh, let's say 42%. That's a lot. Same for Johnny Peralta. They're both very aggressive. So one away, and here's John Jay. Jay grounded out, hitting 237. First ball swinging. Cardinals lead two to nothing. We're in the fourth inning. Cardinals might be an aggressive team, but they certainly have piled up 35 victories. But they're a bit of a surprise in the fact that a good ball club, and they are that. Mike Matheny can tell you they've not hit well with two out and runners in scoring position. As a team in that pressure spot, they're hitting only 204. Dodgers are hitting 227. But both runs tonight came on two out base hits. Two and two they count. One out fourth inning. Two nothing St. Louis. And ball three. Michael Waka waiting on deck. Three and two. Little chopper to Adrian. Quick flip. Two down. So with two out in the fourth inning, Michael Walker, who flied to center in the third inning, coming up. Michael Walker. And a strike. Michael Walker certainly on a fast track. He was signed by the Cardinals in 2012, and he was with the big club in 2013. Nice pick by Justin Turner to get him. So the Cardinals go down one, two, three for the second time in four innings, and at the end of three and a half innings, two nothing, St. Louis. Your cereal bowl presented by Sports Authority. So go to Dodgers.com slash promotion and we'll see you Sunday for the cereal bowl. 
It'll be interesting how Michael Walker works the inning now in the fourth, leading 2 0. Gonzalez, Turner, and Ethier coming up. The reason we say that, he has gotten the first pitch over to the last nine hitters. Two of them have swung at it. Gonzalez grounded out, and Guerrero fouled it off. So let's see what the Dodgers do on that first pitch. Frias, meanwhile, retired the side on 10 pitches in the fourth inning. 2 0 Cardinals. An error by Justin Turner with two out in the third, followed by singles by Holiday to score Carpenter, Peralta to score Holiday. And you're up to date. 0 oh 1 to Adrian. It's a great combination, Waka and Yadier Molina. High fly ball down the line, coming across his holiday. Can't make a play. 0 oh 2 to Adrian. Talking about the combination of Waka and Molina. This year, Waka's earned run average with Molina, the catcher, is 2.4. What makes Waka such a leader, not just that he reminds everybody of Adam Wainwright, but he beats the good teams. Foul ball. So far this year, against teams with a record above 500, Waka is 4 and 1 and an earned run average of 2. 0 oh 2. Another foul ball. Oh, Adrian trying to get something started. 11 home runs. 39 runs batted in. 0 oh, and 2. Oh, great pitch down. Gonzalez checking with the plate umpire. Did I swing the strike? That would be strikeout number four. Gonzalez goes fishing. One away. Four strikeouts for Walker. Another thing about Walker now the Cardinals are leading two to nothing. If the Cardinals score three. Walker is seven and zero, oh, And the team is nineteen and five. If they score three runs. Good easy fastball. <laughs> Comes out in ninety six. No balls in one strike. Just off the plate. When you're up there, like a Justin Turner right hand batter, remember Turner's single to right field. If you're a right hand hitter and you try to pull, you're lucky to hit 250 against Walker. Remember, he got Grandall with. Peterson at second base and two out. With men in scoring position, you know what the opposition is hitting against Waka? 154. So Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright, terrific pitchers of the past. And boy, they have a dandy in this fella. Drive into center, but the glove of John Jay is waiting for it. And we have two down in the fourth inning. It figures to be tough pitching in the series. When you look back and see the scores when the Dodgers and Cardinals played in St. Louis. Cardinals won three to nothing. Dodgers won five to one. Cardinals won three to one. Ethier fly to center in the second inning. Foul ball. Dodgers have had two base runners, a leadoff single by Turner to right field, and a two out double to left field, Jock Peterson. Again, if you try to pull Walker, be very hard to be successful, and the Dodger hitters have gone the other way. One and one. Walker reminds so many people of Adam Wainwright that even his manager, Mistook him for Wainwright just two years ago. And a high fly ball, which is all it is, 
and John Jay. So the Dodgers tiptoe through the fourth inning and at the end of four Cardinals two Dodgers nothing. Don Mattingly, they'll bring you an inside look at the best moment of the week on and off the field. Don't miss Dodger Clubhouse Monday at 5:30 on Sportsnet LA. Cold and one, single to right, M was picked off last time up, struck out. Oh, and one. Cold and one in the month of April. Hit 297 and in May hit 330. He's very successful early in the count. That's why he went after that first pitch. One ball and one strike. In fact, just to show you how close they keep tabs of hitters, with a one ball, one strike count, he's batting 529 with a home run. 5'9, 190, 24 years old. Colton Wong off the plate. Wong was 12 years old. He played in the Cal Ripken World Series, Aberdeen, Texas, and they won the United States Championship from Hawaii, from Hilo. Wong, first round pick back in 2011. Three and one. Pulled just foul. Three and two. We talked earlier and showed you the, the huddle, so to speak, around second base. Jose Akindo talking defense to the entire Cardinal starting team. When Wong signed his million dollar contract as a first round pick when he was leaving Bush Stadium. Jose Akindo gave him a parting gift. It was a DVD of second baseman turning double plays. Welcome to the big leagues. Colden has a brother, Keen Wong, drafted by Tampa Bay two years ago. Three and two. Still up there. Full count. They asked him, Do you model your game after any player? And he said, Oh, definitely. Dustin Pedroia. And he's gotten his walk. So good at bat. That is the first walk since the first inning. So two walks given up. 
Matt Carpenter had the other walk and reached on the air. That was a ground ball wide of third. Turner got his glove on it, couldn't handle it. And it gave the Cardinals a slight opening, and like a good ball club, they took advantage of it. Holiday single, Peralta single, Reynolds single, and they had two runs. And ball one. Wong at first base has stolen four. Carpenter, as you can see, last of the Mohicans, no golf glove. Two and oh. The free is now. It's one of those moments. You got a very good hitter at the plate, and you have someone who can run well. Wong has stolen 20 bases twice. Two and oh to Matt Carpenter. And a line drive by the diving Hernandez in the right center. Peterson over to cut it off. On his way to second is Carpenter. He is in there with a belly whopper. And just like that, the Cardinals have runners at second and third, and Number nobody seven, out. Matt Holiday. For Mike Matheny, you have to remember. In the six games they have played against the Western Division teams, they've won five out of six. The only loss was to Carlos Frias. So Carpenter legs it into a double. Stopping at third is Wong. So second and third, and the Cardinals trying to break it open. And again, remember, if the Cardinals score three, they're 19 and 5. And if they score three, Walker's undefeated. High foul ball down the line, no play back into the crowd. Holiday hit into a force play. Dodgers thought they had a double play. It was disputed. The Cardinals were right. Matheny challenged it, and it was a force play. And then Holiday in the third inning got a base hit. 0 oh and 1 to Matt. First base open. Missed inside. 1 and 1 the count. Matt Holiday out of Oklahoma. Boy, what a state for producing some wonderful power hitters. I mean, Mickey Mantle comes to mind immediately. Willie Stargell, Joe Carter, Johnny Bench, Matt Holliday, and a fellow by the name of Matt Kemp. One and one to count. Last year, Matt Holliday led the league in go ahead RBIs. And he slices it to right. Ethier has to back up. So Wong tags up. And he will score, and the throw goes to third, not in time. What made that an impossible play for Ethier, the ball was just starting to take off. It's one thing to charge a base hit, but when you have to back up to handle something, no way you can get off a good throw. It was an accurate throw. It was the best he could do. But you see, he had to go back, and that ruins a whole play. So Holiday, a fly ball to right field, but it's a run producing fly ball. Wong brings it in. Carpenter goes to third. And now there it is. They're going to walk Peralta intentionally and take their chances with Mark Reynolds. Ball one. Again, remember those numbers. Walk a 7 and 0 if he gets three runs. And the Cardinals are 19 and 5 if they get three. And they're leading 3 0. So Waka cradling that very valuable right arm.
Dodgers against the Central Division. Three wins, four losses. And now here comes ball four. So first and third, a run in. Cardinals lead three nothing. Honeycutt hoping he's running to the rescue. And the batter will be Mark Reynolds, feast or famine. Reynolds struck out, nothing new there, but then got a single to right to drive in a run in the third inning. To look ahead for the Dodgers when they come up in the bottom of the fifth inning, they'll have Guerrero, Rollins, and Hernandez. And if anybody gets on the pitcher. So here's Reynolds. Mark, little fly ball single that dropped in in the third inning. Interesting that an error by Justin Turner in the third inning opened the door and led to a two run inning. Dodger defensive alignment. Has been very good. Oh, and one. The Cubs and the Brewers have the loosest defense, 45 errors. Cardinals 32, and the Dodgers 25. Dodger defense has improved dramatically. They're 13 with 25 errors. Last year they had 107. That made them second highest. So they're trying to strike out Mark Reynolds. 0 and 2 the count. No balls and two strikes. Free us trying to put him away. And a little number. Frias looks, goes to first. And the Cardinals have runners at second and third. The Peralta advances on that little number. Take another look. Chopper, first he's going to see about the runner at third. He'll hold him. No play at second, though he goes to first. So if nothing else, Reynolds made contact. And was able to advance Peralta, if nothing else. Now let's see about Jason Hayward. Hayward is grounded to first. Last time up, top one in front of the plate. Randolph threw him out. And ball one. Earlier we were talking about Jason Hayward. His first major league at bat, he had a three run home run. But it was so much more than that. It was opening day in Atlanta. He was a first round pick. The crowd went wild, and he comes up and hits a three run home run. Two and all. One of the things the Braves tried to do, tried to get Hayward out of the habit of hitting ground balls. They felt he was hitting too many ground balls. He's big. He's 6'4. Strong enough. He's 235. And they wanted him to hit some home runs. Two years ago, when Hayward led off, he hit 322 during that period. Two and one. Parents interesting story his mom was a French major in Paris. His father was an engineering major on the Dartmouth basketball team and they met in Paris. Voila. Two and two the count to Jason Hayward. Last year he had 271 he had 11 home runs. 
Both of his parents went to Dartmouth. Deuce is wild here with two out. Two balls, two strikes, two on. Ball three. Interesting that uh, Jason Hayward's father, Eugene, was born into a military family. And when his parents divorced, they sent Eugene to Los Angeles to live with his uncle, who was his uncle, Kenny Washington, the pride of UCLA. First base open three and two. Ground ball foul. You have a right hand hitter on and you might say to yourself why don't they put Hayward at first base and go after the right hand hitter. Well the right hand hitter. Is Molina. Who in his career is hitting 327 at Dodger Stadium. So they are going to try to get Hayward. Well, Frias working very hard. This will be his 28th pitch in the inning. And a line drive base hit to right. Carpenter will score. The throw is up the line. And they're going to have Hayward hung up, but there's two more runs in. And they will finally tag Hayward out at first base. But it's a lot too late. As the Cardinals pick up three big runs. Hayward driving in a couple. So a walk, then the intentional walk, the double scoring fly ball, and a single. Put it all together, and the Cardinals lead the Dodgers five to nothing. California Toyota dealers. Now, during Toyota's summer savings, you can save big on any 2015 Camry. And by Subway. Download the Subway Restaurants app and lose the weight when you pick up your order. It's Subway made simple. Michael Waka and the St. Louis Cardinals sitting on top of a five to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Waco will face Guerrero, Rollins, and Hernandez. 0 and 1. Alex Guerrero struck out in the second inning. Waka has struck out four. Yet to walk a man. Carlos Frias had a very tough 28 pitch inning. He's now made 85 pitches. Dodgers are moving around in the dugout, but no one's actually throwing. 
They're just get a little restless down there. That's in there. Five runs, seven hits for the Cardinals, no runs, two hits for the Dodgers. Just missed with that one. Two and two. Fast ball grounded wide to third. Matt Carpenter is on it in the dirt. And a nice pick by Reynolds. Number 11, Jimmy Rollins. One out, fifth inning. Jimmy Rollins flied to left field in the second inning. One of the things that Michael Walker is doing tonight, besides bringing great stuff, but he's gone right after the hitters. He's had 13 straight first pitch strikes. You talk about first ball swingers. Then you have a pitcher who just grinds it out throwing first pitch strikes. Yadier Molina. Shaking up a little bit. Take a look. You know, Molina talks about the, I remember his brother talked about it at the end of a year. One hand is totally different from the other hand. I think he's talking about whether that should have been a strike. Dale Scott. Oh, I think mentioned did the ball hit the bat. Or perhaps they're arguing about the, what they used to call catcher's interference. They used to call it tipping the bat. Let's see. Well, certainly, certainly Molina is not going to call tipping the bat against himself. Foul tip into the mid. Well, let's see. Anyway, talking about Molina's hand, you think, well, the left hand has the glove on it, so everything's okay. But when you're catching 95 mile an hour fastballs all day, every day, at the end of the year, the left hand is far more swollen than the right hand. It was actually discolored as well. It is a brutal job. No big deal. One ball and no strikes. And you see him looking at that left hand. I can remember catchers used. Uh, what do you call it? Falsies. A woman's falsy and put it in the glove to try and cushion it. Two balls and no strikes. But believe me I don't care how much padding they have in the mitt. You take a beating. That's going to be a base hit for Rollins. Over to get it is John Jay. So with one out, Rollins a single, and the batter, P.K. Hernandez. Hernandez. And as we mentioned, for one reason or ten, the number eight hitter in the lineup against Waka has hit 360 against him, although P.K. just hit the ball out in front of the plate. So one out, a runner aboard, 5 nothing, St. Louis. On one. Game one of a four game series with St. Louis. Carlos Martinez tomorrow night against Brett Anderson. Jaime Garcia the following night against Clayton Kershaw. And then Sunday, 5 10, Lance Lynn and Zach Granke. And then the Cardinals will leave and the Dodgers will welcome the Arizona Diamondbacks. One ball, one strike. And a strike. One and two. Hard to believe this early in June, and the Dodgers have played Colorado 13 times. That's going to be a base hit. 
And Rollins is not going to stop at second. He's in the third with one out. So there it is again. The number eight hitter in the lineup comes up with a base hit against Michael Walker. Pitch is up. Bad pitch for Walker. And TK is on it and strokes it into left center. So first and third, one out. Carlos Frias coming up. And the first thing Bundy wants to do is talk to him. Dodgers down 5 nothing. They might even ask Frias to bunt. Stay out of the double play. Get runners at second and third. Hope that Jock Peterson can get lucky. He's showing bunt. That would be the heads up play. Yep, the bunt is trapped. The out will be at first. Waka almost caught that ball in the air. So Frias stays out of the double play. Dodgers now have runners at second and third. It was this close. Watch Waka right there. Trapped it. Looked to hold Rollins. Goes to first. So Jock Peterson robbed of an extra base hit. A great running catch by Jason Hayward in right center back in the first inning. And then in the third inning, hit a ball where he doesn't usually hit a ball. He hit it off the left field wall for a double. So the Dodgers trying to get back into the game. Two out, second and third. Another left hand hit of Grandall on deck. And that's going to go foul down the line to the left. We mentioned earlier, only one of his 17 home runs have gone to left. That's not surprising for a left hand hitter, but only one has gone to right field, and that is surprising. On one time requested by Peterson. Just off the plate. That's one thing that Peterson has brought to the dance. The fact he has a good eye, having walked 35 times. Of course, he's also going to pay a price, and he's done that. Striking out. He was struck out 64 times. Ball two. Randall on deck, remember, beat Waka in St. Louis with a three run home run. Two and one. Frias did his job, got the bun down. Two and two. Coming into the game, Waka. Walked 17, struck out 42. He has four strikeouts so far. Mike Matheny, a great catcher in his day, and he knows all about concussions. And taking strike three call. So Peterson strikes out looking five strikeouts a big one indeed for Michael Walker Dodgers lead runners at second and third and at the end of five it's five nothing St. Louis.
against the Philadelphia Phillies. It was so close to being a perfect game. He struck out 12, he walked one, and the man he walked was Richie Allen, or Dick Allen, whichever, and Allen got to first base and then was thrown out trying to steal. So Sandy faced only 27 batters. Otherwise, he'd have had two perfectos, but I guess one is enough for everybody. Let's go back to this one. Yadier Molina struck out, grounded out. Carlos Frias down 5 0, top of the sixth. Foul ball down the line. Must have been a, a tremendous family to produce three major league catchers Yadier, Benjamin, and Jose. In fact, Ben and Jose. We're on the same team with the Angels. Ground ball. Kike comes up with it. Nice play. One out in the sixth. John Jay coming up. John Jay. Jay hitting 235, grounded out twice. By the way, that reminds me of something I wanted to mention a little earlier. There have been a lot of ground balls in the game. You know the way it is getting in the major leagues? You get 152 ground balls for every fly ball. 152 ground balls. Game has changed dramatically. One reason, well, this is the uh, the experts speculating. The biggest reason is the umpires are giving the pitchers the low strike. Before they uh, homogenized the umpires, where you had National League umpires, American League umpires, the biggest difference was the equipment. Because the equipment changed the validity of the call. In the National League, the umpires wore the inside chest protector. Line drive, base hit. Uh, John is aboard, and Waka will be coming up. The American League umpires wore what looked like an inflated mattress. And because of the inflated mattress, so the feeling was the umpires could not see and bend over with the mattress to see that low strike. So the American League was called a high ball strike and the National League since the umpires could bend and maneuver that was called a low ball league. Now they all wear the same equipment. A hundred and fifty two ground balls for every fly ball. Wow. Nice bunt. So Waka moves his man along nicely. John Jay now at second base. And the batter, Colton Wong. Oh, by the way, uh, just to follow up on that, if you want to talk about 152 ground balls to every fly ball, now this is a note that uh, I read about a week ago. To illustrate exactly the big difference, remember when Miami was here, Christian Yelich, the left fielder, hit a home run against the Dodgers. When this note came out, Christian Yelich had hit seven balls in the air. Seven. Big league left fielder. Yeah, it's 5 nothing Cardinals, so we're talking about ground balls and fly balls, of course. But it is kind of interesting. The game has changed. Golden one. Single to right, struck out, walk, scored a run. Ground ball to Kike. That'll be that. So no runs, one hit, a man left, and at the end of five and a half innings, Cardinals five, Dodgers nothing.
Donovan and many more. For tickets, go to Dodgers.com slash Hollywood Stars. Five runs, eight hits, no errors for the Cardinals. No runs, four hits, and one error for the Dodgers. If you're wondering about the Giants, they're not scheduled. They have a day off. They're in Philadelphia, and tomorrow Tim Lincecum will go up against former Giant Jerome Williams. Good pitch, 0 and 1, off speed. That changeup is dazzling, especially when you can come back and throw in the middle 90s. High fly ball to left field, Matt Holiday. So one out in the sixth inning. The difference. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That was lovely of you to give us a hand. <laughs> Sometimes, once in a while, you see a little one like that, and you wish you could just reach into the screen and get a big hug from him. Or have him run the length of the field and grab you around the legs. Sometimes. One ball and no strikes. Adrian grounded to third, struck out, 0 for 2. Walk up, not only 7 and 1, 5 and 0 on the road. But in those road games, he's allowed two or fewer runs in each of the previous six starts and he hadn't allowed any tonight. That's going to be a base hit. So Adrian just reaching out and poking it into left field. Dodgers now with five hits and Justin Turner single to right fly to center. Knowing Justin angry at himself. With two out in the third inning, he had a ball get off his glove for an error, and immediately the Cardinals jumped on it. Holiday single, Peralta single, Reynolds single, and they had two runs. But then they come back with three more in the fifth. Ball one. So Walk is making his seventh start. Allowing three runs or less. Greg Maddox. It was way back in 1995. But Greg Maddox with Atlanta. Went nine straight road games. Three runs or less. One and one. And that's going to be a flare that drops in. Down by five. Gonzalez is just going to go to second. So two wrong field base hits. First and second, one out. Gonzalez goes to left. Turner goes to right. And Andre Ethia goes to the plate. Dodgers now have six hits, nothing to show for it. Trying to read your mind, I can tell you, Waka has allowed five home runs. I know that's one of the thoughts. Right. 0 and 1. Two on, one out. That's a strike. Waiting on deck. Alex Guerrero, who has struck out and grounded out. Justin Turner has two hits. Peterson, Gonzalez, Rollins, and Hernandez. And that's it.
One ball and two strikes. Fastball. And he's thrown in 95 after 83 pitches. From his 51st pitch to his 100th pitch during that stretch, the hitters are batting 164 against him. Ground ball wide in the hole off the glove of the shortstop Peralta, and the bases are loaded with one out. So the Dodgers are going the other way. Gonzalez, a left hand batter, single to left. Turner, a right hand batter, single to right. Ethier, a left hand batter, hits it to the hole on the shortstop side, and the Dodgers have loaded them up. That's three hits with one out. So the batter now, Alex Guerrero, and of course, all you have to do is remember that game in Colorado the other night, bottom, uh, top of the ninth. Dodgers losing. Alex hits a grand slam home run, and the Dodgers win it 9 8. But then again, that was Colorado. And ball one. So three wrong field singles to load him up with one away. Five nothing Cardinals. Bottom of the six. That was a good pitch. One and one to Alex. That grand slam just. A couple of days ago. On deck, Jimmy Rollins. For Ethier, hitting number five in the lineup, that base hit was really something. Tell you why. Two and two. The number five hitters in the lineup against Waka this year, one for 24. That's a batting average of less than half a buck, 0 for 2. But Andre found the hole on the left side. Two and two to Guerrero. And a fly ball down the line. Holiday a long way to come, and it's going to drop foul. Just to refresh your memory, we were talking about it Tuesday night, ninth inning pitch around the knees. Raphael Betancourt was the pitcher, and over the wall it went, despite a great effort by Charlie Blackman. That was Guerrero's grand slam. Two and two. And ball three. Well, we told you what the number five hitters are batting. One for 24. The number six hitters are three for 30. That would be a batting average of 100. So a big pitch for Michael Walker. Three and two with one out. And a high fly ball to center. It's playable. Andre is on the track. Everybody tags. The run will score. Turner goes to third, and it is five to one. The Guerrero gave it a ride, not far enough, but he did pick up a run batted in. Ethier had to hold. Turner advances to third. Gonzalez brings the run in. And Jimmy Rollins now coming up. Dodgers haven't had much of a look tonight. They had a two out double by Peterson. They had first and third with one out. That's when Freya sacrificed. That made it second and third, and Peterson struck out. And now their first real rally going the other way against Waka. Gonzalez single to left, Turner single to right, Ethier single to the hole at short. 
And Guerrero's long fly ball for the run. And a strike. Rollins fly to left, single to center, one for two. TK Hernandez waiting on deck. First and third, two out, one run in, 5 1 St. Louis. Ground ball to the hole, plugging it up nicely is Colton Wong, and that's all. So the Dodgers put together three hits and a fly ball, get one, and at the end of six, St. Louis five, Dodgers one. of your life for exciting performance and surprising offers. Shop ChooseNissan.com and by CDW, people who get it. Cardinals holding on to a 5-1 to one lead as we go to the seventh inning. It will be Carpenter, Holiday, and Peralta against Carlos Frias. Carpenter walked in the first inning, reached on the error charge to Justin Turner, and then doubled in the fifth inning. That's a strike. One and one. For Carlos Frias, he's just not able to figure it out. On the road, his earned run average is 1.8. Coming into this game, his earned run average at home was seven. Two and one. That's a big difference with Waka. Earned run average on the road, 1.6. Round ball to Adrian. He'll hang it. One away. For Frias, this will be his last inning of work. He is due to bat second. Juan Nicasio is loosening up. Then Daniel Colon. So the Dodger bullpen has been a little active. Dodgers have Hernandez and free a spot and Peterson when they come up in the bottom of the seven. Matt Holiday hit into a force play, single to center, scored a run, and then last time up had a sacrifice fly. And he promptly bangs it the other way for another base hit. Frias now has allowed five runs and nine hits. Yanni Peralta single to right, single to center, and was walked intentionally. He has knocked in one, scored one. He's been very busy.
Oh, and one. Tomorrow night, Carlos Martinez, Red Anderson. Saturday night, Jaime Garcia and Clayton Kershaw. That's Brett. And then Sunday, Lance Lynn and Zach Granke. And that's going to be whacked in the right field line for a base hit. Stopping at second was Holiday. He could have easily gone to third. And Jose Akindo almost fell out of his uniform. Akindo could not believe that Holiday stayed at second. He is a little annoyed. Maybe Holiday was confused on the base hit. He slowed down at second, stopped, looked lost, started to third, and then went back. Head down runner lost flight of the ball. I'm sure. Where is it? Now nah, I better not. And all the while, Akindo is jumping out of his uniform in the third base coaching box. Look at me. Meanwhile, Kike Hernandez and the other Dodgers in trouble again. Here's Mark Reynolds. On one. Right hand batters have six hits against Carlos Frias, and all of them either to center field or right field. They have not pulled one ball. And of course, in the sixth inning, when the Dodgers got a run, they all went the other way. Oh, and two to Mark Reynolds. Two on, one out, seventh inning. 5 1 St. Louis. Whoa. A 95 mile an hour fastball. Up and in. Mm. One ball and two strikes. Close. Close. On deck is Jason Hayward, and of course you know what he's thinking. There's a one hopper knocked down by Rollins. They'll get a feed no further. The so holiday gets to third, where Okindo can <laughs> praise him for his base running. Now let's see. Manningly coming out. We'll see about a double switch. Alberto Cayaspo will come in. And Cayaspo looks like he's going to play third base. Jimmy Rollins made the last out. But we'll wait and see. We'll be right back.
interesting background. There aren't too many uh, World War II angles in the game of baseball these days, but he's the grandson of the late Frenchy Colomb, who was a staff sergeant and flight engineer on a B-17 that was crippled by enemy gunfire during a raid over Berlin. And the B-17 was really struggling to return to an Allied air base in England. In the mid-flight, a German fighter came up from behind. But instead of shooting down the B-17, the German aircraft disengaged and they allowed the Americans to safely escape. And 40 years later, through a newspaper ad, the two opposing pilots finally met. And the incredible story was documented in a book called A Higher Call. Oh, and one. And for Daniel, well, as he said, I know one thing for sure. If the German ace, Franz Stiegler, had taken out that sitting duck American B-17, I wouldn't be here. But here he is pitching in the big leagues against Jason Hayward. First and third, two out, five to one, St. Louis. Dodgers rearrange the furniture on the infield. Justin Turner, who had been at third base, will take over at second. Kike Hernandez, who had been at second, takes over at short. And then Kiaspo at third. One ball, one strike. Now back. So when it's all said and done, Coulomb bats in Rollins' spot and Kiaspo bats in Frias' spot. Carlos made 107 pitches, and whatever it is for a young right hander, he is one man on the road and a troubled pitcher at home. First and third, two out. In the dirt, squirts away from Grandall. Down to second base goes Reynolds. The so second and third two out. One ball, two strike count on Jason Hayward. Down and dirty. Hit him on the right bicep. And down to second on the obvious wild pitch goes Mark Reynolds. Two and two. The first Mark Reynolds had to hit the dirt. Now Jason Hayward has to get out of there in a hurry. Five one Cardinal. Will there be any retaliation? Well, stage is set for it. First base open three and two. And got it. Ninety one mile an hour fastball. So the Cardinals leave runners at second and third. Dodgers dodge a bullet. Frias is out of there and we're heading with the bottom of the seventh five to one St. Louis.
The Dodgers will have Kike Hernandez, then Alberto Cayaspo, and then Jock Peterson. Coulomb made six pitches to retire Hayward in the seventh inning. So Michael Walker ready to go back to work. Walker has made 92 pitches. Fouled away. Hernandez topped the ball out in front of the plate, single left, one for two against Waka. One ball, one strike. And that's to the gap, but it's slicing, and Hayward's going to pick it off. Not exactly room service, but the ball did come to him. One away. Number five, third baseman, Alberto Cayaspo. I Alberto Cayaspo, a switch hitter. 0 for 2 batting right handed. 4 for 13. Batting left handed. And ball one. One and one. Kevin Segrist and Randy Choate, two left handers, warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. You know the average of starting pitchers actually winning a game compared to starting pitchers on a team that do win the game is a bit different. The Cardinals have had their starting pitchers win 22 games and that's over 20 percent higher than the National League average. The offense has saved starting pitches from 10 possible losses. But the old quality start routine six innings three runs or less. The Cardinals are second highest. They've had 33 quality starts. Fly ball John Jay. Two out seventh inning Jock Peterson coming up. Jock Peterson robbed of an extra base hit. Great running catch in the first inning by Jason Hayward in deep right center field. Doubled off the left field wall and struck out. Jock had that little straight home runs in five straight games. Five runs, ten hits for the Cardinals. One run, seven hits for the Dodgers. On to we have the paid attendance forty five thousand and fifty eight forty five zero five eight tomorrow night Carlos Martinez and Brett Anderson. Big overhand off speed that's a change. Walker trying to go eight and one. Trying to go six and zero oh against a downcast Carlos Frias. Two and two to Jock. And little ground ball. Colton Wong. So down go the Dodgers and at the end of seven it's the Cardinals five and the Dodgers one.
seven game homestand. Remember the Cardinals are here through Sunday. That be Friday tomorrow night Carlos Martinez and Brett Anderson Saturday night Jaime Garcia and Clayton Kershaw Sunday at 510 and that would be Lance Lynn and Zach Granke then Arizona will be in for three and after that the Dodgers will go to San Diego and Texas before coming home to play Texas and the Giants. Dodgers have won four out of six from Arizona. But right now they're up against a far better team in the St. Louis Cardinals. Yadier Molina, then John Jay, and Michael Waka. Molina struck out, grounded out twice. Sprayed foul. 0 and 1 to Molina. When you fall behind to the Cardinals, you're asking an awful lot to try and come back because their bullpen, runaway leader, the Cardinal bullpen, its earned run average 2.1. Walk up has now made 106 pitches. Fast ball on the corner. Trevor Rosenthal is the closer. Dodgers. We'll never forget Rosenthal who throws very hard. He has 17 saves this year. Two and two. Interesting tonight. Gonzalez has one hit. Ethier has one hit. So collectively they are two for six. They are together two for 19 against Waka. Still two and two. Yadier Molina. Michael Waka has now made 106 pitches. We have nothing to go on in the sense that the Cardinals don't give you the number of pitches made by the pitcher. That's off the plate. Cardinals suffering a terrible loss. Adam Wainwright when he went down for the year. Wainwright's earned run average was 1.4. So Molina draws the walk, opening up matters in the eighth inning. Cologne now getting ready to pitch to John Jay. Number 19. When you think John about Jay. it, that's such an interesting story. The grandfather on a B-17 that's all shot up, hoping it can make it to England. A German fighter plane comes along right behind what is really a a sitting duck. And after all, I mean, it's not good sportsmanship. This is war. And the B-17 has just dropped bombs, I'm guessing, on Germany. And the German pilot gets behind, and for whatever reason, looks at that crippled B-17 and peels off. So easy to have just blown it out of the sky. And the grandson that one of the crew members is standing out there on the mound in Dodger Stadium. Wow. Fouled away. Randall Gritchick is out on deck. Uh, Gritchick hitting 282. Will be up there swinging as Michael Waka will have had it for tonight. 
Kevin Segrist, a left-hander, throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. John Jay, two ground balls and a single. Remember that thing I was talking about 152 ground balls to every fly ball. Well Waka had a fly ball. Holiday had the sacrifice fly. That's it. One ball two strikes. Breaking ball wraps him up. Great pitch. The so John Jay locked in on that big overhand curveball. Now, Gritchett coming up to bat for Waka. Pitching for the Cardinals, number 15, Randall Gritchick. Randall Gritchick out of Rosenberg, Texas. He was a first round pick by the Angels, batting for Michael Waka. It turned in another great job. The interesting thing about uh, Randall Gritchick, he, he was famously taken by the Angels, one pick ahead of Mike Trout. That's right. The word on that story is the Angels had Trout rated number two in the draft. They took Gritchick ahead of Mike with their back to back picks. Just to lower Trout's bonus. Knowing they had Trout. And lock and key. That was the year Steven Strasburg was the number one pick line drive. And right over the head of Alex Guerrero. I'm not sure if he lost it in the lights or just badly fooled. But just like that runners at second and third. Alex Guerrero on that line drive. I'm not sure what he thought, if he thought. He's moving to his left, and it's way over his head. So Gritchick says thank you very much. He has a line drive double. The Cardinals have runners at second and third, one away, and Colton Wong coming up. First base open, five to one, St. Louis. Ball one. Well, each of the last two years, the Dodgers have won the series from the Cardinals. Four out of seven last year, and four out of seven the year before. Didn't do them any good at all in the postseason. So now, if they go down to defeat, they will be one and three against the Cardinals. And maybe they decided that's the strategy. And that's going to be hit to the gap. Guerrero will not get it. It's going to be cut off by Guerrero. Two runs will score on that double. And seven to one, St. Louis. To Colton Wong. Who was picked off after getting a base hit to open up the game has come roaring back and picks up two ribbies to open it up seven to one. So Colomb gives up two. Alex Guerrero acted, I guess, like he never saw the ball or it just took off on him. But Michael Walker. He is sitting comfortably ensconced on top of a seven to one lead. And with a runner at second. Here is Matt Carpenter. Ball one. Carpenter has walked, reached on an error, doubled, rounded out, batting 314.
Fastball, but low. 2 0 to Matt. Game in and game out. A solid performer. Matt Carpenter. And remember, the Cardinals lost Matt Adams, who had four home runs and 20 runs batted in. Mark Reynolds finishing up for Matt Adams, but uh, Adams, a very valuable player and a run producer. Change up 3 0. Colton Wong at second base, only one out. Seven to one, St. Louis. And there's ball four. So for Matt Carpenter, he's been on base four times tonight. Seven. Matt Holliday. And Matt Holiday coming up. And here comes Rick Honeycutt. Dodgers began the night two games in front of the Giants because the Giants were swept by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Giants are now in Philadelphia. They were off today. They'll play tomorrow. So from the looks of things the Dodger lead will be cut to a game and a half. We have time to give you a somewhat interesting note. Randall Grichik, who batted for Waka, had that double. Well, he's had back to back games with a double and a triple. That's the first time a Cardinal had done that since 1954 when Ren Chandy did it. Randall Grichik. Red Chandy. Wow. Besides being redheaded and the fact he was a terrific player, the one trademark for Red Chain Deans, second baseman, threw right handed, of course. He carried his glove until the very last second. He would stand at second base holding the glove in his right hand. And then just when the pitcher was ready, he'd slip the glove on. And he would do it all the time. And after a while, you'd be hypnotized looking at Red Shaney. When is it going to be? He'll be late. Never. 0 oh and 1. I remember I was so impressed that I had taken a little German in school. So in my mind, Shane Deanst, Shane Beautiful Deanst Worker, Beautiful Workman, Red Shaney. And boy, that's what he was. And he cost me some money. And every time I saw Red, I would remind him that he owes me some money. Little ground ball to Gonzalez. They'll move up 90 feet. And we have runners at second and third. What happened was Red was finishing up his career with Milwaukee. And uh, I flew not with the team to Milwaukee. And I had a light raincoat on. I remember it. Collar pulled up. And for some reason, the cab driver swore that I was red chains. And finally I thought why am I going to ruin this man's drive to the hotel. I'll go along. Why not. So I tried to be extra polite. To do it. But. When we pulled up to the cab uh, to the hotel. I had to tip the driver. So I tipped him far more because I love red chains as a player than I would normally have tipped him. So every time I would see Red Chain, he says, hey, you know, I spent an awful lot of money impersonating you. Well, anyway, Michael Watt is on his way to a win, and the Cardinals are leading 7-1.
UHD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.TV Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Every night on every device, too. Blackout and other restrictions apply. So visit MLB.TV for details. Grichik, who uh, came in and doubled, stays in the game in left field to give Matt Holliday the rest of the night off. Kevin Segrist, the left-hander out of Buffalo, New York, will take up the pitching. Another big fella. Waka 6'6. Segrist is 6'5. Segrist was drafted in the 41st round in 2008. So he spent about five years in the minors. And finally made it. Fastball for a strike. Grandall annoyed, I think, thought the pitch was low. Oh, and two. I love this scouting report. The scout who eventually signed him was describing Segrist, who, as I said, is 6'5. A little low. He said he's high waisted, he had legs like a flamingo. Off speed, great pitch. Randolph's still angry over that first pitch call to strike. So one out in the eighth inning. And the batter, Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez and Ethier together were 0 for 13 against Waka. And they're each one for three tonight. Segrist, big left-hander, and yet right-hand batters are hitting only 185 against him, but left-handers are batting 296. He's basically fastball, curve, slider, and they say an improving changeup. That's going to go down the left field line, slicing as she goes foul. 45,058 taking in the game tonight. Tomorrow night, Carlos Martinez and Brett Anderson. Saturday night, Jaime Garcia, Clayton Kershaw. Sunday at 510, Lance Lynn and Zach Granke. Two and one. They say Segris has actually been clocked as high as 99. That's hard for anybody, but especially a left-hander. Three and one. Colton Wong playing playing Gonzalez a good 10 to 15 feet out into right field. One thing we did not see at all tonight. Overloading one side of the infield or the other. Fastball drilled into the gap. That'll go to the wall for Adrian Gonzalez, who has missed a double, breezing into second with his 21st double of the year. So again, Seagrish can get the right hander out, struck out Grandall, and the left hand batter, Gonzalez, double. Take another look. Fastball. The left fielder, Grichik, was shading towards a foul line. So there was no chance to cut that ball off. 21 double. Leading the majors. And now Justin Turner. Two singles to right field. Ball and one.
0 and 2. Last year, Segrist was on the DL, strained left forearm. Gonzalez at second, one out, seven to one, St. Louis. Nice, easy fastball, and it comes out there at 96. <laughs> Seth Maness down in the bullpen, right hander. Jock Peterson alone with his thoughts. There's Seth. Fastball. Got him. Took a little while to get the call. Number so it's sure working Andre according to the here. numbers. Seagrist gets right handers out and has trouble with the left hand. Well, he'll get a left hander now in Andre Ethier. Seagrith, by the way, is 25 years old. It'd be 26 late in July. That's the slider off the plate. Andre Ethier twice fly to center and single to the hole at short. In the only inning, the Dodgers put together an offense. They had three singles and a scoring fly ball. For their only run. Fastball. 2 and 0. Oh. Good fastball in there. Two balls, one strike. Two down, bottom of the eighth. Gonzalez at second base, and the Dodgers down seven to one. And another good fastball at 95. Two and two. Alex Guerrero. Waiting on deck. Way off the plate at 96. Segrist comes in with an earned run average of two, and he's in his 26th game. Fastball and a chopper to Wong. All right, the Dodgers, no runs, one hit, a man left, and at the end of eight, it is all St. Louis in the home of the Blues. Cardinal seven, Dodgers one.
which will have led all the way. Cardinal scored two runs in the third inning. Came back with three more in the fifth inning. And added two more for good measure. In the eighth inning. Dodgers only run came in the sixth. And they never really did challenge Michael Waka at all. Mark Reynolds. Topped the ball wide at first. Uh, Gonzalez who threw him out. Hit the ball out in front of the plate. And was thrown out by Randolph. Got a big base hit to right field. Right. In the Dodger bullpen, Chris Hatcher warming up. Reynolds base hit in the third inning, drove in a run. It was a single to right field. 0 oh 2. Cardinals trying to win their third in a row. Cardinals began the night six games in front of Pittsburgh. Still 0 2. Cardinals beating the Dodgers tonight will be 6 and 1 against the Western Division. The Dodgers losing tonight. Will be three and five against the Central Division. And remember, the Dodgers, in a rather strange schedule, have already played Colorado 13 times. Nine wins against Colorado. They beat Colorado five of seven here, four out of six there. So nine and four. Against the last place team in the West. Check swing. Strike three. So Reynolds goes down. One out in the ninth. Jason Hayward had a base hit in the fifth inning to drive in two runs. Jason Hayward. Ball one. That's going to be a strike. Seven runs, 12 hits for the Cardinals. One run, eight hits for the Dodgers. A little ground ball up the middle. It'll be the shortstop coming across to make the play. So Hernandez going to the other side, take care of that slow ground ball. And we have two out here in the ninth inning. Tony Cruz, right hand batter, coming up now to hit for Molina. Tony Cruz and Kevin Seacrest, they were signed just about the same time. Tony, a catcher. You don't play a lot when you're backing up Molina. Cruz hitting 194. Ball one. Cruz is from Lake Worth, Florida. Went to Palm Beach Community College. Signed by the Cardinals back in 2007. And finally made it up 2011. In junior college, Tony was a third baseman. In high school, he was a catcher.
you'll be 29. One ball, one strike. Foul back. Tony made his debut late in May 2011. Played his first big league game. Starting in place of Yadier Molina, who had the day off. Cruz single to center field in his first at bat and finished three for five that night. Nice way to break in. Not much fun when you're a pinch hitter and strike out. So we are heading for the bottom of the ninth inning, and the night belongs to St. Louis with three outs to go. Cardinal seven, Dodgers one. Out of the Dominican Republic will pick up, so it's been Waka, Segris, and now Villanueva. Originally, he was signed as a free agent by the Giants. When he finally did make it to the big leagues, he surfaced with the Blue Jays. Two years with the Blue Jays, two years with the Cubs, and this year now with the Cardinals. He was uh, playing baseball as a teenager in the Dominican and his manager happened to run into Sammy Sosa who was with the Cubs at the time and Sosa asked if there was anything he could do for the manager and the manager mentioned the young player and he said I have this kid if you see him maybe you can help him out get him signed or something and Sammy took a look and was interested in Carlos asked him if he had a visa could he travel could he go to spring training. Villanueva typical see teenagers saying yeah right sure I really believe you. A couple of days later Villanueva got a call and he was headed to Mesa Arizona and the Chicago Cubs. Meanwhile Alex Guerrero with the bat struck out grounded out and drove in the only Dodger run tonight. Tony Cruz behind the plate. And that's a little high. Hard ground ball, great backhanded stop and throw. Matt Carpenter coming up with a nice play to take a base hit away from Guerrero. Take another look. Backhand, set, turn. On the mic. Chris Heisey. Chris Heisey now coming up to bat. Remember, Colomb was batting in Rollins' spot. So here is Heisey. Up and down. Had a very difficult spring. Knew he didn't make the ball club. But since the season started, he's been up and down a couple of times. That's in for a strike. 
on one to high sheet. On deck, Kike Hernandez. One ball, one strike. Seven runs, 12 hits, no errors for the Cardinals. One run, eight hits, one error for the Dodgers. Michael Waco will be eight and one, and he'll be six and zero oh on the road. Jock Peterson doesn't figure to have an at bat. So the five straight games with a home run that'll be in his memory book and for that matter the Dodgers had a six game streak of hitting a home run in each game here at home. In this great rivalry between these two wonderful teams with the Cardinals winning tonight the separation since 1900 will be two games two. Dodgers have won 1017 tonight the Cardinals now will make it 1015 and we still have three games left in the series it is one of those terrific rivalries has always been and always will be all right two down ninth inning seven to one birds breaking ball in there on one. Oh, big, slow breaking ball. Great pitch. Mm. Oh, and two. Take another look. He's going to bail on that pitch, and then it just drops on the outside corner. Oh, and two. And a oh, and two fastball. And he almost took Carlos Villanueva's his head off. So that's a mistake pitch for sure. After that changeup. Trying to throw a fastball, no balls, two strikes. Got it up and almost paid a bigger price. So Hernandez comes up with a murmur of protest. A two out single in the ninth inning with the Dodgers down seven to one. Alberto Cayaspo coming up. Cayaspo at 5 9. Checks in at a good 200. From Maracay in Venezuela, 32 years old. And that's right. Kiaspo signed by the Angels, came up with the Royals. Then he spent four years with the Angels before going to the Oakland A's. Then the Braves. Now at the Dodgers. One year with Kansas City, he had 11 home runs, but he's certainly not a power hitter. Two balls and one strike. Kaspo fly to center in the seventh inning. Two out in the ninth. Seven to one, St. Louis. On deck, Jock Peterson. So it would add a little interest if Peterson had one more shot. He's one for four tonight with a double. Two and one. Hard ground ball to the hole. Colton Wong is there. And that'll do it. Dodgers get a base hit in the ninth inning. Nothing more. Seven runs, 12 hits for the Cardinals. One run, nine hits for the Dodgers. Waka the winner. Free us the loser and tomorrow night it's Martinez and Anderson and certainly the player of the game would be Michael Walker. He was dynamite as usual. He allowed one run just a few hits picked up his eighth victory he's eight and one and is six and oh on the road. So Walker the winner and of course that brings back memories of 2013. That'll do it. We'll talk to you tomorrow night till then. 
to all of you from all of us we wish you a very pleasant good evening everybody